Well, in case you hadn't heard at this point in the evening, the final season of Game of Thrones is kicking off on Monday. Now, is this international hysteria surrounding this entertainment phenomenon different from what we've seen before? Is it an enduring series or is it just another in a long list of really good TV shows? For tonight's Taking Stock Chat, I'm joined by Richard Miles, Pro Vice-Chancellor at the University of Sydney and Alex Vikovic, Digital Editor at Your Money. Thank you both for being with us. Now, uh, all things Game of Thrones tonight. Uh, Alex, we've spoken to you already. I'm going to go to, to Richard now. Are you a fan? Uh, are you, yeah, are you loving it? Yeah, I'm kind of a fan. Do you know, I'm a bit of a casual fan. OK. So I'm not sure I've <laughs> even watched it in sequence. The, the, reason, the reason why I'm so interested to hear whether or not you're a fan is because you are a historian, an archaeologist. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah. I've been really surprised at how many people are apparently Googling, is Game of Thrones set on real events? Um, I mean, what do you think? Has it sparked people into being interested in the old days of England, which is also where you're from? I think, I think the issue is, is that shows like this make the past seem a lot more interesting than it actually was. <laughs> That's the problem, right? So when you're teaching. So in other words, it's sort of false pretenses. <laughs> Look, the problem with it is, is that I'm going to let you into a big secret about history. OK. That in much of history, we don't actually really know quite what happened. Um, you know, there are massive gaps in our knowledge. And what I always think, I remember, never forget when I first became an archaeologist, this guy that taught me he said, archaeology said 50% science, 50% imagination and you've got to be good at the imagination <laughs> bit, right? So yeah. that's why, are they it's a similar different? formula. Yeah, exactly. Oh, are they okay. slightly different? And what, what you see in that show, what I notice in that show, are bits and pieces of sort of historical vignettes and also things like a bit of Machiavelli thrown in. Mm. It's like a big old cauldron where they're just chucking everything and staring <laughs> it up. But it's great, right? Yeah. It is. Alex, we spoke to you before about some of the mind-blowing numbers here, but I just wonder about a legacy of something like a Game of Thrones. I mean, obviously, people are so obsessed with something like Star Trek that uh, speaking Klingon is still a thing all these years later. I wonder if this has reached that sort of level. You know, what do you Look, think? they say that it has. I mean, in terms of the numbers, it certainly has. And, and we're, they're already starting to talk about spin-offs. You know, we're going to see all um, sorts of different, you know, versions and iterations of Game of Thrones. They're already talking about a, uh, a series that's set 10,000 years prior that, that's going to sort of lay the foundations and different Hollywood names are being thrown around for that on the Time Warner streaming service. So, look, I think it, I think it has got that sort of legacy, potentially. I was just going to say to Dickie, I think he must have been reading different ancient history books to the ones that I read. I thought that, uh, you know, from what I've read about ancient Greece in particular, you know, it's not dissimilar from Game of Thrones. And I think that, um, you know, that is one of the reasons that a show like this resonates. Um, I'll put my hand up and say I'm one of the nerds who has read the books as well as watched the movies. Oh, my word. Um, that's right. So I'm an <laughs> urban nerd. You do know your stuff. Well, you know, you'd hope so, right? you know, at the helm of your money .com but, uh, but, but I think that, you know, there's fantasy that's, that's out there that's too much even for me to touch and there's stuff that goes really mainstream and I think the stuff that does um, does have kind of resonance with mainstream topics whether that's the Machiavellian stuff the politics I mean in most countries we we're talking earlier about how this is now in a hundred countries mm. and in all of those a hundred countries I'm sure you can watch the sorts of things that are going on on the screen around the Iron Throne and the, the sort of cutthroat politics and, and Machiavellian, Machiavellian activity and it you know draws similarities to your own political system yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of people out there that, that pile fan theories on top of conspiracy theories, on top of and, more fan theories. political commentary. I mean, you yeah. know, I mean, you've got things like, what, the, the Knight, is it the Knight King? Oh, yeah. yeah. He's, yeah, yeah. he's sort of obviously an expert recycler, isn't he? That's you know? right. <laughs> yeah, he's not yeah, you just recycle the whole thing. He's just the boogeyman in, in various forms, really. I mean, but, I mean, he's brilliant, right? I think that's yeah. a fantastic kind of, you know, all his gormless sort of, what are they, works or whatever. What are they called? You'll know. Which those the, funny corpses, the White Walkers. Around. White Walkers. No, it's the other things. Those other people get killed and then they. Re They're definitely the White Walkers. <laughs> <laughs> the White Walkers. <laughs> you haven't even watched them in order, Dickie. I'm going to be tweeted at like uh, mad after this. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, look, it, it is interesting though. I kind of come back to this question of some phenomenon. They, you know, they burn bright and then they burn out. You know, we were talking uh, not that long ago about something like, you know, Pokemon Go and mm. about how that was unbelievable. It was everywhere. Is the real skill here with Game of Thrones the fact that it's gradually built? and built to the point now where you know we're on a business show and we're talking about Game of Thrones for a couple of hours. Yeah, because it's like a massive brand. It's a huge, yeah. huge thing. It's, yeah, of course you should be talking about but, it. And yeah. it is unusual. Like, that is very unusual. Usually shows with this kind of fanfare and with this kind of money behind them, um, not just shows, but, you know, media um, activities, you know, they, they usually they sort of, you know, peter off. And in this case, it's only snowballed year after year. So that's, you know, a big deal in and of itself. I think the reason why this has probably got 
more legs than uh, you know maybe Pokemon Go is because it does touch on some of those sort of historical themes. Um, and I think you know I, I haven't been in uh, one of Richard's lectures. I'd, I'd like to maybe one day. But if it was like Game you of Thrones, anytime, anytime, <laughs> <time. laughs> have it. Yeah, we'll bring the cameras next time. <laughs> that sounds good. Like, uh, look, moving on to something that could quite possibly feel like it comes out of Game of Thrones sometimes. But look, after seven years in London's Ecuadorian embassy, Julian Assange has been dragged outside in handcuffs by the police, with the US seeking extradition to face charges relating to WikiLeaks data dumps. Now, Australian Prime Minister Scott Morrison says the situation has nothing to do with us. So, question here, is he right? What do you think, Alex? Well, he was born in Townsville, so it's got something to do with us. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, this is an Australian national... Um, uh, I, look. Scott Morrison announced, uh, speaking of Game of Thrones type scenarios, announced an election just you know a couple of days ago, um, and so I understand why he doesn't want to inject himself into this scenario. I mean, there's no great political expediency for him, um, and this is a really thorny issue. You've got to keep in mind this is a single guy who's had an enormous amount of influence over global politics. He's been playing off, you know, the two participants in in the former Cold War. I mean, he's right at the pointy end of, of international relations. Um, so you know. Is it really our business? I mean, it, you know, it is insofar as he's an Australian national, but not only that, you've got to remember that Australia was one of the few countries in the coalition of the willing that went to Iraq, and a lot of the work that WikiLeaks has done um, has been focused on um, activity in Iraq and Afghanistan um, that, uh, you know, involves civilian and journalist deaths. Um, and so I think, uh, you know, we're involved in those military operations as well. So it's not just that he's an Aussie, you know, a lot of what WikiLeaks has been involved in exposing um, has, you know, Australia has, has an involvement in. Mm. Richard, what do you think? I don't think you can, we, we can't wash our hands of him. And he's an Australian citizen as far as I, I know. Mm. You know, we seem to be in this sort of age at the moment where people go and do things we don't like in other areas of the world and we just kind of wash our hands of them mm. as if they had nothing to do with us. Well, they are. Yes. I think the thing about him is this, is that, you know, there is some darkness around this and that's around the things in Sweden. You know, and in some respects, I would personally, if he's going to see justice in some sort of way, I'd like him to see it in Stockholm yeah. and answer those, you know, answer that whole case. Yeah. Look, it's, it's interesting, isn't it? Because when it comes to Scott Morrison intervening in, in extradition orders and, and charges in other countries, that's a very political move. And I think it comes down to popularity because it seems that Julian Assange in Australia it is a divisive character to say the least, possibly not that popular. I mean, we know that a lot of what WikiLeaks exposed was very important to have uh, on the record. Some of the things, the Iraqi uh, helicopter attack, the manual for Guantanamo Bay uh, mm. uh, prison camps, uh, stolen emails, a lot of 9-11 related uh, documents. Uh, but still, these people in Australia, we have a kind of a, a theory or a situation where we kind of don't really know what to think about him. Is that fair to say, do you think? Yeah, look, and I think that um, partly it's because he hasn't been um, in the public eye in like the way that a kind of notorious a figure like him. In the yeah, that's right, uh, stroking, <laughs> yeah. a, stroking a, a hairless cat. But you know, it's it's, uh, and that is the image that he kind of. I, I suspect he's the sort of individual who enjoys this notoriety, who wanted to always be an infamous figure, and um, now he's certainly back in the public eye. Now he'll probably have his ability to speak to the cameras and so on. I think the fact that he hasn't had that has been part of what um, has you know led to this kind of rocky um, support that he's had. But he's still got his supporters. I mean, Pamela Anderson is out there today oh, yes. um, oh. saying, uh, yeah. of all people, well-known political actor. make it up. And just, look, just the support you want, right? You know, <laughs> and at the risk of, you know, picking your battles, I, I, I think she's right to some extent. Look, I know that these are important laws and, you know, the whistleblower activity they've been engaged in can have some dangerous impacts. But as far as I'm concerned, um, a lot of what WikiLeaks has done is in the public interest. You know, the stuff that we've um, spoken about, um, as well as that, you know, the stuff during the US presidential election. Now, I know there's a whole debate about the timing of when he put this out and whether it was in Russia and Trump's interest. But notwithstanding that, these emails that were leaked from the Democratic campaign um, were certainly in the voter interest at the time. They showed collusion with media companies and, and, and against one of their own candidates. So, look, I think... And now he's facing the death penalty as well, we should say, for activity that I think is, as, you know, could, could be described as whistleblower activity. It's incredible. I mean, with you and Pamela on his side, he's got a chance. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> the, the one other thing I wanted to ask about here, Richard, is Ecuador here. They've kicked mm. him out, uh, among other things, for not being a particularly good guest. You yeah. know, he's been whizzing up and down the hallway on his skateboard, not cleaning up after his cat. And what Do was you this think that's di a... weird digestive problem that I he had? Know. I didn't want to know that's about That's right. And he was, well, apparently he was filming the, uh, the, Equ the new Ecuadorian president's uh, wife and daughter dancing. So I think that's where he ultimately went wrong. I mean, talk about yeah. biting the hand that feeds you. The one country willing to give Wouldn't him a, a side. 
pile on. I think, look, I think the problem, and this touches on what we've just been talking about, he's not a particularly likeable dude. You know, there's something weird about him. Mm -hmm. He doesn't come across particularly well. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he looks like the sort of guy that didn't have many friends at school. Yeah. Um, so, and I think that plays into it as well. It's part of a sad story, you know, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Look, uh, moving on to people who are extremely likeable and well liked Prince Harry and Meghan Markle are uh, keeping the birth of their already world famous baby a secret until they have a chance to celebrate as a family. Now, do they have a chance? Is this a good example that they're setting, moving away from the immediate social media sharing of everyone when they have a kid? Do you think, uh, you think you well, like this one? I think it's cutting completely against their business model. Yeah. <laughs> That's why we have them, for God's sake. Yeah. <laughs> it's because they've got, you know, they're there basically as a great boon to tourism and, mm. you know, and publicity, great thing for Britain. You know, and Britain needs it at the moment. Well, and they're now trying to hide about the way the only good thing that's going to happen this year. <laughs> yeah, a bit of frustration coming through there. What do you think, know, I'm, I agree. In defence of the, uh, you know, my, my colleagues in the UK press, there's going to be some very angry uh, newspaper editors who are, you know, <laughs> looking to move Brexit off the front page um, and for good reason. And look, I think I'm not one, I'm, I'm a Republican, I, I guess, and, but I'm not one of those that, you know, shakes their head and says, what, what is the fascination with the royals and why? I, I get it, you know, I, I think that um, overwhelmingly they're a force for good in the world. I think that, you know, I understand why people are really um, have leaned into this story. Um, and I don't think that they get to turn around and, and say that we're not going to do the photos. I mean, I understand that they want a, the kid to have a normal life and the steps that Princess Diana took, um, f you know, for her children certainly seems to have worked out well in terms of helping them become well-adjusted sort of mature people but you know they take the salary I think they have to take the photo um, well, you know, you've got to wonder I mean job, why do they, yeah. what they need to do is just have a look at the palatial house they're given all the money all the private flights That's right. and poor Julian Assange is only a few blocks away and he's you know, in, in <laughs> a dingy chalk and cheese there, yeah. Her Majesty's pleasure right well, that, yeah. <laughs> it, you know, right. one of the other things that's worth mentioning here is how many people are gambling on this baby already you know time of day that it's gonna be born names oh. gender gender of nanny I mean literally everything so you know there's a lot of money at stake well Winx is something. retiring tomorrow Chris they got so, a, you know, they got a bet. got to do something <laughs> once that's over and uh, got a bet on Meghan something. Markle is a, is a sure bet to uh, to generate public Publicity and interest, no doubt about that. Absolutely. Love it. Alex Vikovic and Richard Miles there. Thank you very much for joining me for taking stock on this Game of Thrones special night that we've got here.